Ah, who doesn't remember their very first game of Crusader Kings? Chances are, you started off trying to rule some big realm like France, England, or the Byzantine Empire, only to realise that, oddly enough, you seriously lack experience ruling a medieval kingdom. Your vassals realised too, and swiftly won their independence, usurped your kingdom, and reduced you to a mere footnote of medieval history. But fear not, for there exists a wonderful realm where medieval kings can be trained, and its name is Ireland. With its small independent realms and cut off from larger predators by the Irish Sea and the North Atlantic, Ireland has long been seen as a training ground for new Crusader Kings players. So in this video we want to examine how Crusader Kings' depiction of Ireland matches actual historical records of the Emerald Isle in the early Middle Ages. Just a quick disclaimer before we get into the video, as you've probably figured out by now, I'm not Irish, so please give me the benefit of the doubt whilst I attempt to pronounce the places and names from the beautiful yet difficult language of Gaelic. Thank you very much. According to Trinity College Dublin historian Peter Crooks, Feudalism is commonly thought of as coming to England with the Norman Conquest of 1066 and being extended to Ireland with the Anglo-Norman invasion of the late 1160s. It is increasingly apparent, however, that early medieval Gaelic society was not so isolated from the European mainstream. In the 11th and 12th centuries, continued contact with the continent ensured that Irish kings acted like feudal lords, albeit under the broad definition. He continues to assert that Ireland had been moving towards a strong centralised kingship, and had the Anglo-Normans not screwed things up when they invaded Ireland, there would have been a centralised Irish kingdom in the next century or so. So not only was Paradox right to portray their island as a feudal society, it also means that you are right to attempt to unify the country, with a long line of Brian MacMorichards and Morichard MacBrians to unite the island. In CK3, Ireland is separated into five petty kingdoms that function as duchies. Ulster, Connacht, Meath, Leinster, and Munster. At first glance, this appears to be accurate. The Gaelic word for province is cuiger, which means a fifth. But, as always, it is a little more complicated than that. In early and high medieval Ireland, there were even more distinct regions than the five just mentioned that were operating at the same rank. For example, Dublin, Brefni, and Ossory, which are all oldums in CK3, are mentioned as kingdoms in historical records, such as the Chronicles of Ireland. And the fact that Ireland as a whole is portrayed as a de jure political entity in the form of a single kingdom is also reflected in history. Whilst the leaders of Munster, Leinster, Ulster, Dublin and Meath all saw themselves as competing kings, they all acknowledged the existence of a High Kingship of Ireland. Many of these High Kings were just of legend, but throughout the Middle Ages there were numerous rulers who were formally declared High Kings of Ireland on the ceremonial Hill of Tara, the site where, according to legend, prehistoric Irish High Kings were chosen. The problem was that just a handful of them actually held de facto power over the island. However, looking back at the video game, there are a couple of characters who are claimed in the records to have at one point achieved this. The most interesting person you can find in CK3's 1066 Island is unfortunately not a leader you can actually choose to play. If we look at the Petty Kingdom of Munster, you can find him. It is not Petty King Marchard MacDonachard, who we know next to nothing about, but his cousin and Chancellor, Turgilvach, or Turlock O'Brien. You can see in-game that despite the fact that he holds no titles, he actually has a claim on the entire Kingdom of Ireland as well as all of his cousin's claims. This is because his grandfather was the famous High King, Brian Baru, who is credited by historians with ending Viking domination of Ireland in the Battle of Clontarf in 1014. Turlock O'Brien, or Turdorvach MacTighbrian, probably lived from 1009 to 1086. As his father Tighe was killed by his half-brother and Turlock's uncle, Donochud MacBrien, it is now Murchad MacDonochud, the son of fratricidal Donochud, sitting on the throne of Munster in our game. However, in reality, Turlock retook the throne with the help of the neighbouring kingdoms of Connacht and Leinster in 1068, two years after the 1066 start, and even went on to gain the title of the High King of Ireland in the 1080s. 
We cannot criticise Paradox for depicting Murchad as the ruler of Munster in 1066, since according to historical records, he was. What does strike us as odd though, is that Murchad is singled out as one of the promising characters in the 1066 Rags to Riches scenario, when in the actual course of events he barely had two years left as ruler of Munster. In the brief for the scenario it says, In the beginning of the 11th century, the High Kingship of Ireland has fallen in and out of House Brian's grasp, as the Irish noble houses have warred over territory against each other and Viking settlers. Yet, while hailing from a line of men deemed destined for kingship, not much is known about Murchad's brief reign over the smaller area of Munster. In a way, Paradox even acknowledges the fact that this guy is absolutely irrelevant for Irish history. It is just a shame that we cannot start the scenario as his cousin Turla, who has such a fascinating backstory. Evolving from the disowned heir of Brian Baru to the High King of Ireland in his own right with the help of the powerful King of Leinster. Speaking of Leinster and High Kings, historical records suggest that Leinster's leader in the 1066 start, Earl Diarmid MacDonoghood, has been misrepresented in CK3. Not only do historians place him as King of Leinster, but even give him the title the High King of Ireland with opposition in the 1060s. This is much more impressive than what we see of him in the game. However, his conquests are somewhat represented by his son Murchad controlling Dublin. Murchad, ruling over Dublin and the Isles, actually died before his father Diarmid in 1070 after being badly wounded during a military campaign in the Kingdom of Meath. As I mentioned earlier, Meath represents a duchy in Crusader Kings 3. The Kingdom of Meath is named after the old Irish word for the middle, which makes sense seeing as it is in the middle of the island. Unfortunately, we could not find any characters in the region that reflected real historical figures. But looking further west, there is some historical info about Petty King Aid MacTig of Connacht. As far as we could make out, Aid's reign was a complicated one, suffering invasions from other clans and dynasties in the region. Whilst he first managed to defeat and kill his main rival, Ruri of West Connacht, both him and his son were later killed by Ruri's son, who took the throne of Connacht from the Kanghur dynasty. Unfortunately, there is not a lot to be found about the 1066 characters in the north of Ireland. Aid MacNeil and his brother Donal did exist, but instead of ruling two separate earldoms as they do in CK3, they succeeded each other as kings of the region known as Elyuk. Generally, we can say that in the centuries prior to the year 1000, the Irish leaders of the north were dominating the island, a dominance that had shifted by the start of the 11th century. Ireland's cultural medieval history is characterised by several waves of migration and foreign infiltration. The Celts, who had come to the island during the Iron Age, had blended with the indigenous population to form the Gaelic culture still associated with Ireland today. In the early Middle Ages, Ireland saw Vikings pillage and settle on its coast. The most prominent Viking settlement would probably be Dublin, which grew and prospered in today's capital of the Republic of Ireland. Dublin was founded as a settlement in 841 by Vikings of Norwegian descent. Hence the county of Dublin's culture is Norse in the 867 start and Norwegian in the 1066 start. This very well reflects how the population of Dublin identified in the 9th, 10th and 11th centuries according to historical record. The next big cultural caesura was the Norman invasion of 1169. Although this was only a partial conquest, it marks the beginning of more than 800 years of English dominance and oppression on the island. The Norman invasion of Ireland was a significant event in High Medieval Britannia, and it happened over a hundred years after the latest possible start in Crusader Kings. Still, Paradox managed to tie this conquest into the DNA of the game by means of the Realm Decision Request Claim on Ireland or otherwise known by its historically relevant name, Request Lord Abilita. This decision is available for rulers of England, France or Scotland whose culture is part of the Frankish, West Germanic or North Germanic group. Other than that, the leader making this decision must be Catholic, on good terms with the Pope, and have a certain level of devotion. 
If you successfully activate the decision, you then gain the trait Lord Abilita, which gives your dynasty a claim on every county in Ireland for 100 years. Historically, this is based on the 1155 papal bull by Pope Adrian IV, who by the way, is the only Englishman to have ever served as Pope, which under the title Lord Abilita, gave King Henry II of England the right to invade and govern Ireland. Um, well, the right to invade according to the Catholic Church. The concept of a separate Christian faith for Ireland, insular Christianity, has given rise to many discussions in the community regarding the basis of this concept and its consequences on the gameplay. Insular Christianity's doctrines in the game are pretty similar to those of Catholicism, with the exception of the former being polygamous and allowing for clerical marriages. Yet the fact that insular Christianity is separate and thus locked out of Catholicism has caused some criticism amongst the community. As one user on the Paradox forum posted, even with the benefit of the doubt and assuming that Paradox in all likelihood did not intend to take a profoundly biased sectarian revisionist stance on Ireland in opposition to mainstream historiography, it seems a really regrettable decision both in terms of historical accuracy and gameplay effects to make Christianity in Ireland a separate faith from Catholicism. The post goes on to say that the gameplay effects are net negatives and at odds with themselves because Ireland is locked out of Catholicism in order to have a massively nerfed, barely tweaked Catholicism which nobody else follows. Whilst the user is right that it is historically questionable to portray insular Christianity as a faith completely outside of Catholicism, the concept of a distinct form of Catholicism in Ireland does largely align with modern historiography of Irish religious history. According to John Koch, a historian specialising in Celtic studies, Celtic speaking peoples in early medieval Ireland were united in an interpretation of Christianity that clearly differed from the Roman Catholic Church in its tradition and practice. They did not officially revolt against the Pope or the Catholic Church, however, you'll recall that pesky papal bull that legitimised the English crown to conquer and govern Ireland. The Lord Abilita was justified in the eyes of the Roman Catholic Church because of the Irish people's lack of religious cohesion with the papacy. Specifically, King Henry II of England was supposed to enforce the Gregorian reforms, which had not been satisfactorily passed in Ireland due to the semi-autonomous nature of its church institutions. Ultimately, we think that the separate but non-hostile character of the Irish Church, as well as the possibility to request the Lordability Bull from the Pope, add a very interesting and historically informed dynamic to the British Isles in CK3. But for players who, probably not without reason, criticise some of the mechanics of Insular Christianity, one Crusader Kings player actually published a mod called Improved Insular Christianity in the Steam Workshop. Among other things, it allows for women to assume clerical office, justified by cases of early Christian Irish women taking the roles of bishop and abbess. And whilst on the subject of mods, how could we publish a video about Ireland and Crusader Kings without referencing the fantastic total conversion mod, Tales of Ireland? Honestly, the mod is basically a free DLC, but if we were to do it justice by talking about its lore, this video would be double the length. Links for both of these mods in the description. Did you also start your Crusader Kings career in Ireland? What are your best memories for the games you played there? And what are your thoughts on Ireland's separate Christian faith or Paradox's attempts at historical accuracy on the Emerald Isle? Let us know in the comments and as always, please consider liking and subscribing for more video game related history content.